Uh, it's good to see everybody. It's great to be here. Our pastor is out of town. Uh, he sends his uh, he says hi to everybody, and so I hope that everybody receives that today. Uh, we were doing this series for, it's, it's geared towards all the young people. Uh, are there any young people here today? All right, all right, all right. I was hoping you guys would all show up. All right, so, uh, so we're gearing this to all the young people. We're calling it Young and Free because uh, though we're young, God wants us to be free, right? And, uh, and to live out our lives to the fullest and to everything that God wants from us. Amen. And so today what we're going to be talking about is uh, free from poisonous roots. And I remember uh, about 12 years ago uh, when uh, we had this one young minister that would come to our church. And, uh, you know, he was, he was a young guy. He was from Guatemala. He had a, a wife at home. He had a, a child. She was pregnant with his baby. And... You know, I, I looked up to him. He was a friend of mine. And, you know, he was here visiting at our church. And through awesome time, we found out that he ended up, he ended up getting one of the girls from our youth ministry pregnant. This is where you go, ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. And so, and so we found out that. I'm like, man, what a jerk, <laughs> you know. And not only that, but it really upset me because... This girl was 14 years old. She was part of my youth ministry. I was upset. And, uh, and he, went back to his, he went back to his country or whatever. And, uh, and we found out, I found out later on that he had got another girl pregnant during that time. And, yeah, and this, thank you. <laughs> great, great audience. And so, and so, uh, so for, a, for a while there, man, you know, I was, I was kind of, a, I was really upset because, one, as a minister, he wasn't representing God well. Uh, and then, two, you know, it's one thing if, you know, this happens with an adult, you know, but with a, with, a, with a young girl, you know, she's part of my youth ministry. I was upset, you know, and I said, man, when I see this dude, I'm going to punch him in the throat. <laughs> Can I be honest? That's what I said. That's what I was thinking. I said, man, I remember talking to the parents. I said, don't worry. When I see this dude, if he ever, if he ever comes back over here, I'm going to punch him in the throat, you know. And every time, and, 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 you know, time will go by and stuff, and every time somebody will bring him up or, or talk about him or say, hey, I saw him on Facebook, I, I always say the same thing. Man, when I see that dude, man, I'm going to punch him in the throat, <laughs> you know? And they're like, why the throat? I go, because he won't see it coming, you know? And so, and so I, 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 say this for, I say this because a lot of times we don't know uh, how we have these, this bitterness hidden inside our hearts, right? And for me, this was, a, this was a root. It was a seed of bitterness that was being planted in my heart for years ago. And I, I think a lot of times we don't know that there's a seed of bitterness inside of us. Until we're, we're actually confronting a situation on the person that hurt us. And so for me, this was, uh, for a long time, I had this seed and I didn't even know it was brewing inside. Uh, for me, I was, uh, every time I would talk about him, I would say, man, I'm going to punch him in the throat. And everyone I would tell the story to, it would be like, it sounds justified, <laughs> you know? Yes, please do it one for us too, <laughs> you know? This guy sounds like a jerk. His wife was at home pregnant. And yes, yes, punch him twice, you know? And so... And so a lot of times when we're, when we're, when we're dealing with, um, with bitterness and, uh, you know, it, it starts to, it, it's, it's a need that's unmet and uh, we never, we never satisfied or whatever, it, it begins to brew up. And what happens is that we begin to justify our actions. We begin to say, well, I mean, this guy deserves it. He deserves what he's going to get. We begin to talk about the, the person. We begin to talk, talk about the things. Uh, that this person had done to us, and, and we begin to justify, we begin to say, hey, you know what, he deserves what he's getting, and for a long time, I really justified, uh, I thank God I never ran into him, you know, uh, because, I, I mean, I don't know if I would have gone through with it, and uh, I hope that I would enough, but I think that had I done it, I think that I would have tried to justify, I would have said, hey, you know what, you, you had to come in, uh, you, you deserve what you get, you know, and, um, and I remember just throughout these past years, even, even talking, talking about him, just talking bad about him, saying, you know, I don't know if he's changed. I don't know if, he's, if he gave his heart to the Lord again and repented and all these things. I hope he did. You know, but for a long time, uh, not only was I talking about, you know, beating him up, but I was also talking, talking bad about him and his ministry and just saying, man, you shouldn't trust this guy. You know, you shouldn't, you know, and I think that that happens in our hearts. We begin to talk about people. We begin to, uh, we begin to display this character that is so ungodly, this character that, you know, I, I've never heard of Jesus wanting to punch somebody in the throat, you know. <laughs> that is not a godly, godly quality. 
Uh, yet we do this in, in, in a lot of t- times that we don't see that we are bitter inside, right? We don't know that this is hanging on inside. And so some of the deceptive partners of bitterness include jealousy, anger, hatred, disobedience, contempt, gossip, rage, and, and so many other things that come along with it. And so when, we, when we're beginning to display these characters, we need to be careful and we need to, we need to, take, a, we need to take a moment to observe if, we're, if there is a seed or a, a, a root of bitterness inside our lives. And if there is, we need to do something about it because what it's going to do, the job of bitterness is really to disrupt the peace that's happening inside your life. It's there to disrupt all the peace and bring chaos to your life, right? This is what the Bible says about that. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, 14 and 15, it says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy, right? Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. I, I don't know about you, but I, I thank God for his word that it's always there to sharpen us and, and lead us and show us the way because without it, man, we'd be a mess. But uh, I, I want to tell you right now that uh, I'm not perfect, but I'm a work in progress, right? Turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm a work in progress. Amen, amen. We're, we're, we're all work in progress here, man. We're all, we're all on this journey to try to get somewhere with God, right? We're all on this journey to better ourselves each day. And so before we move forward, let's put this word in God's hand and let's just pray that God would just speak into our lives. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word, God. We thank you that your word is here to sharpen us and make us better, God. We thank you for Jesus, the example that he set in life and how to conduct himself with people and in people that, uh, to the point that his friends that even betrayed him, God, and how he responded with love. Father, I pray that we would take this example on, God, as, as children of God, as people that are trying to follow you, as people that are trying to better their lives, as people that are trying to make it to heaven, God, that we would take this example of love and, and, and use it, Lord, towards our enemies, towards the people that have hurt us, towards the people that, uh, Lord, that we in our mind probably think they deserve, uh, they deserve to be hurt, God. But I pray that you help us, God, overcome this hurt and, and bless us today. I pray that we receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. So the very first point uh, in, your, in your outline, if you see there, it says, if we allow bitterness to take root in our lives, then we might miss God's grace in our lives. And so if we, if, we don't, if we don't demonstrate or we don't, if we allow bitterness to take root in our lives, then we might miss God's grace in our lives. And so that is very true. We, we have to be careful because bitterness can defile our lives. Bitterness can set us apart from God's grace. Bitterness moves us in a different direction than from God's love. Um, the other part says this, that bitterness shows up in betrayal. Bitterness shows up in betrayal. Where do we see bitterness? Where, where does bitterness stem from? A lot of times it stems from someone betraying us. Maybe um, someone you love suffers abuse. Someone hurt them or someone, someone you love got hurt. Um, a close friend gossips about you, right? Maybe a coworker begins to talk about you or, or start talking about you. One of your best friends begins to uh, spread gossip about you. Someone that Someone didn't stand up for you when, uh, or someone didn't have your back at one point in your life. Or maybe uh, someone you tried to help took advantage of your generosity. Uh, man, a few years ago, uh, my, I had a car that was messed up and needed help. <laughs> it needed prayer. Uh, and so, you know, I started praying for the car. God, in the name of Jesus, turn on. And so, uh, so I had this car, man, needed some help. And I, I looked for a, mecha- a mechanic. And uh, I got this mechanic. He said, I'm going to look at your car. I got you. I said, all right, cool. He looked at my car, and that's all he did to it was look at it. <laughs> so, Because he didn't do nothing else to it. When I went to go pick up the car, I paid him, I paid him uh, about $400, and I took it back, and it was still running the same. And I was like, and then I took it to another mechanic, another expert, and he says, dude, the guy didn't do nothing to this car. There's nothing done to it. He probably added some liquid or something, but this car is the same. I'm not going to lie to you, man. It started, it started uh, rising up a little, another, another seed towards somebody else. You know, I started making my list. All right, now the mechanic. This guy, the mechanic, <laughs> you know, I was like, you're on my list, bro. You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with that list, but it's, I'm making a list. And I'm just kind of like that one dude from Guatemala, this dude, mechanic, you know, and I'm just carrying this list, man. I'm thinking about these people. And I, I'm not going to lie, man. It was tough. 
um, swallowing these $400 and just flushing them down the toilet because I wasn't going to see them and just saying, man, God, you know, what am I, you know, what is, I feel like telling everybody that this dude's a crooked mechanic. I feel like telling everybody, be careful with this guy, you know what I mean? And I remember just praying, man, and just telling God, man, God, please, please help me with this. And, and uh, I'm letting it go today. <laughs> I'm letting it go today because I'm preaching about it, so I got to let it go today. So I can't be talking about it anymore after the day, right? <laughs> so it's a, learning, it's a learning experience for all of us when we're able to release, uh, release people that, that have, have uh, betrayed us, have hurt us. And so that's where it stems from. You know, it starts off, but, uh, bitterness stems from a little bit of maybe somebody insulted you. Maybe somebody offended you without... They, they probably didn't know that we offended you. Maybe somebody said a joke and you just took offense to it and you were just like, that, that wasn't right. This person is supposed to be this, this type of person. He's saying these jokes. What is, what is he doing? And so, and so bitterness comes from, stems from betrayal. You're just kind of that sense of, man, this guy offended me. This guy hurt me. This guy, uh, this guy is not right. You know, this guy didn't shake my hand the way he's supposed to shake my hand. Uh, last week I told a story about uh, one of my uncles, how... When he got to the hospital, he was mad because the pastor didn't come visit him, you know? And I'm like, dude, you don't even go to the church, <laughs> you know? He doesn't know you exist. How is he going to visit you, you know? And someone was, you know, that's, the, that's another, oh, when a pastor didn't visit me, pastor didn't say hi to me, you know? He, you know, he's busy running around, all, you know, all, I, I, he left me standing, you know? And so it, the, the, this bitterness, this root of bitterness begins to take form in our lives, you know, and not only does it take form in our lives, but it begins to spill out of our mouth, right? And so we got to be careful uh, with how this happens, uh, uh, how this occurs, the bitterness. And the truth, the truth could very well be this. Um, a lot of us, um, I, I, I read this, I read this uh, example that there's someone that's walking with a thorn in their finger, right? Someone has a thorn in their finger and they have this thorn stuck inside their finger. Has anybody ever had a thorn in their it hurts, right? You're like trying to bite it. <laughs> You're trying to bite the skin out and hurry up, get out, you know? And, uh, and you got this thorn inside your finger, and as you're walking around and you're, you're talking to people, someone brushes up against that, 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 that finger with a thorn in it, right? First thing you do, watch out, watch out where you're going, right? You hurt me, you know? And we want to blame the person that bumped into us for the pain that we have. When the truth is, we've had that pain all along that was never dealt with. And so a lot of us, we carry pain just like that. And somebody says something to offend us or somebody does something to offend us or, or to rile us up. And what do we do? We want to get them too. We want to put them on our list when the problem has never been the person that brushed it up to you. But the pain that you had inside the whole, all along that we never dealt with. And that's the way that bitterness starts taking form in our lives. It's never dealt with and it starts to spill over to everyone. To everyone that we meet, people that we talk to, people that we just met, people that, people that uh, go, we go to church with or uh, everywhere we go. And so what happens is that we get easily offended, right? And what God wants to do, he wants to set us free. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? God wants to set us free. He wants us to be free. He doesn't want us to walk around with that hurt in us. He wants to heal that hurt. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, God wants to heal that hurt. And so, and so bitterness leads to wanting to get even. And so sometimes... Sometimes we choose or we rather choose being bitter than forgiving. Someone hurt us, and we don't want to deal with forgiveness. We, you know what? You know what? God will handle it in this time. You know? But we've never released the forgiveness. We've never actually said, hey, man, I, I forgive you, or hey, I'm sorry for what I've done. You know, there's two sides to it. There's, you could be the offender, or you could be the one getting offended, you know? But either way, we choose to ignore, we choose to ignore it, right, rather than confront uh, the situation. And so um, all roots sustain themselves by what they absorb. And so if you ever look at a tree, the tree is going to gather all the moisture that's around them in order to feed himself, right, to, to, to bring nutrition to, to the tree. And so the roots are going to absorb whatever, whatever moisture is in the, in the system. And, and that's just like us. The more that we dwell on a hurt, the more poisonous that our heart becomes. The more that we dwell on the pain and, the, and what people have done to us and the hurt and everything that, that someone has done, that's what we, that's what we do. We, we, we like to dwell in, in our pity. We like to dwell in the anger. We like to dwell on, a, on the pain someone causes us. And, and instead of dealing with it, we start thinking more and more of the pain. What started off as something small, it begins to take root in our lives. And it begins to plant itself inside of us. Instead of, instead of asking for forgiveness, instead of saying, you know what, God, I, release, I forgive this person that hurt me. It, it stays with us for years. 
stays with us. And we don't think, sometimes we don't think about it until somebody else brings it up. And, we, and what do we do? We start getting hurt again. We start remembering the pain. We start remembering what they did to us. And the truth is that it has more control over our lives than we do on theirs. You know, we, the, the, the person that offended us is not even thinking about us. It's not, the person's not losing sleep over the hurt they did to you, but we are. We're constantly thinking about that person. So what are we doing? We're giving that person power. We're giving that situation power. We're giving that hurt power. We're saying, you're in control of my life because everything I do and all, everything that, that, that I do is affected by the pain that's inside of me. So we're, dic- we're led by the, the hurt. And so um, Matthew, Matthew 7, 18 says this. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And so what makes a good tree what makes a tree good, what makes a tree bad is, is the, the root. The source is often found in the root. You know, what, it, what is the root like? Where is it stemming from? What is it receiving? And so um, Hebrews chapter 12, 15 says this. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Now, there in your outline, you're going to see that the word, uh, the word in the Greek translated as defile or corrupt, it means miaino, which means to stain or pollute, or to contaminate. So the more that you meditate on, on the root of bitterness, the more contaminated your soul becomes. And the truth is this, that bitter people contaminate other people. Bitter people make other people bitter, right? They, 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 they're, not, they're not happy where they are in life. They're hurt, whatever's going on. And what happens is this, they spread this among other people, right? And so we got to be careful to, one, if there's, if there's pain or any hurt that we're dealing with, that we deal with it and not begin to gossip and not to begin to talk about other people, not begin to talk about the offender, but, but let God deal with it. Bring it to God and let him deal with it, right? And so uh, the more that we meditate on, on the bitterness, the more that we think about payback, right? The more that we think about one, one he's going to get he's gonna get his, right? Um, example of bitter people. Uh, there's, there's tons of example of bitter people, you know, you could, in, in, in the youth ministry, you can have one person that got hurt and what happens? They start talking about each other. They start gossiping about each other. They start talking about one another. And now this group is isolating that one, that one person, right? And then now that person's crying saying, well, they don't talk to me no more. They don't hang out with me. What's going on? You know? And, and so you see it all the time. And so bitterness never produces good results. Because a person's been hurt, they often justify their bitterness. And so um, when we're cruel with people, when we're cruel with people, we're mean with people, we say, well, he deserves it because of what he did to me. Right? We often, when we talk bad to people, we, 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 we want to hit people in the face. Right? And we say, well, they deserve it. Right? Now, is that a godly? And I'm telling you because, I mean, I'm, again, I'm a work in progress. All right? We've all they're looking at me like, you better stop throwing rocks at me right now, bro. You better stop. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is something God's dealt, dealt with me first before I can deal it with you. And so I'm telling you this is as a, as a group, as a, as a people of God, that that's not a godly mentality. That's not a godly attitude to want to see other people hurt, to want to see, to, to kind of, you know, when something bad happens to someone who offended you, you know, if you've ever done this, <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have to say a word, but you say it with your, <laughs> you know, almost like saying God is good. You know, like, what? Well, you know, we, we, we see other people's pain and we rejoice on their pain. We're like, good. You know, like, I'm not going to say nothing, but you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that spills over and that's the, you know, we, we, we keep record of wrong. And the Bible says, what does the Bible say about love? The Bible says that. Uh, love keeps no record of wrong, but what do we do? We keep record. We're like, well, remember last time? Oh, no, that's three already. You're out. In baseball, you'd be out, you know? And, and we keep record. We keep record of everything that everyone's ever done to us, whether it's our mom, whether it's our parents, whether it's our, our siblings, whether it's whoever it is, we keep record and we take tally. And we're like, at the end, we're like keeping score, right? And, and, and the Bible says, is that really love? Are we practicing love if that's what... The Bible says that, you know, love keeps no record of wrong. You know, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth, right? And go back and read what love, what, what, how the Bible describes love, and you'll see that some of the things that we do towards other people, not just towards, 
not just towards the people that, that offended us, but even to the people that we're supposed to love, we're not even showing love to them, right? And so what is God calling us? He's calling us to change. He's calling us to look within us, uh, to look at all the hurt and all the people that, that we've hurt and to bring it to him. And so um, the problem sometimes is that a lot of us don't think or don't realize that, that we are bitter, you know? We don't realize it or, it's, or it's, we're not conscious of it or we're not, uh, we're not, we don't know. No one's ever told us, you know, or, or maybe they've told us and we're just like, no, no. You know, we're trying to find an excuse to, what, a, lot of, a lot of times we don't know that there, that there is a seed planted in there and it's already taken root, you know. The problem, that, the problem with something taking root is that it becomes difficult in the long run to remove. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen a tree being yanked out or, or cut. My dad cuts trees for a living, and uh, I've been with him when, when we've had some stubborn trees, you know. And my dad cuts the root, but it still doesn't want to come out. And we're like, dude, where is this? You know, because the, the deeper the root, the harder it is to really yank the tree out and to remove. And that's the way it is with bitterness. We, we let it dwell, and we let it simmer for a while. And what is he going to do one day? One day it's just going to spill over on somebody. One day because you never dealt with that. With that bitterness, you never dealt with that hurt. One day, you're just going to take it out on somebody. You're just going to take it on the wrong person. And so, um, so we need to deal with it before it plants root. And so if you look at your outline, the only way to remove bitterness from your life is to kill it at the root. Okay, so we need to kill it at the root. How do we do that? It says there's only one way to kill the root of bitterness, and that's with forgiveness. And so we need, we need to, we need to, sorry, we need to be able to practice, we need to be able to practice forgiveness. And, and what does this look like? You know, it honestly, it's very simple. It's, it, 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 it actually involves vocalizing forgiveness. We need to vocalize forgiveness. We need to actually say, hey, I am sorry. But see, the problem with that is that it's very humbling, Right? It's very humbling, and the reason that we don't do it is because uh, we, we're dealing with a lot of pride. You know, we, you know, why, why do I got to go to her? Why do I got to go to him? You know, they need to come to me. Oh, if they want to deal with it, they're going to come, and they're going to come, and, you know, we'll talk about it, but I'm not going to go to them. You know, and a lot of us, we, 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 we've lost great friends because of a small argument, because no one was able to go up to the person and say, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, forgive me about this. Man, we've lost great friends. We've lost people. Uh, maybe you've lost a best friend at church, or maybe you've had a, a, a break in your relationship with your mom or your dad because of something that was never dealt with, something that was never uh, handled, something that was never situated. Man, um, I know I've shared this in the past, but, man, for a long time, there was a break in my relationship with my father and I. I mean, I couldn't talk to him. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't just say hi to him, you know what I mean? Because it was always some kind of argument that would, that would uh, happen between us. And I remember that uh, I was already going to church, and I was, I was working as a youth minister at the church, and uh, I would go visit my dad. And I remember that one time I was over there uh, visiting them. It was on a Sunday, and we were going to go to church Sunday night. And I was just there hanging out, and I was talking to them. And all of a sudden, we broke out into this argument. I don't even know what we were arguing about. It was just an argument, and, and we just, man, we went at it, and, and, man, we started arguing, and, man, we stopped. We stopped, and I said, man, Dad, hold up. Let's pray. I'm not, I, don't know if I, I don't know how I said it. I might have said it kind of like, hey, man, we need to pray. or So I don't know how I said it, but I said, hey, we need to pray, right? And, and we stopped. And man, I promise you something broke that day because we stopped, and, man, he just stopped on his track. You know, it's like I, I hit him in the stomach because he was like, and he went to his room. I thought he was mad. He went to his room. I went to, I went to my room, and I started, we started praying. And we came back after that, and we were able to talk, you know, like, Dad, I don't know what's going on here. Why, why is this going on? And my dad finally began to, to talk back and say, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. We just always seem to argue. And we prayed together. And, and I'm not going to tell you that we had a perfect relationship after that. It's been, it's been about, what, eight years since that argument and, you know, it's still awkward. It's still the conversation is still awkward with my dad. But at least now I can call my dad and tell him I love you. You know, it's, it was awkward at first because I never told my dad I love you. Except on Father's Day when you're forced to, you know. <laughs> when your mom's like, go tell him. You're like. And then your mom's like, tell him you love him. I love you, you know. 
Dale un beso. Give him a kiss. You know? Of course, those days, you know, you got to do it. Because if not, mom has a chancla ready for you. You know what I'm saying? Or a sandal. She has a sandal waiting for you. So, but, but for me to actually want to tell my dad, hey, I love you, just because it's a Tuesday. Or, or tell him, hey, dad, thank you for, for what you did, man. You, you worked hard, and I find your life a success. I told my dad that one time. I said, dad, your life is a success story. You know, I don't know if, I don't know if I've ever told you that, but your, your life is a success story. You came here with nothing. And you, you have a lot of riches, you know, that a lot of people can't claim to, you know. And I said, man, Dad, your life is a success story, man. I love you. And, yeah, it's, it was awkward, and it's still awkward, you know. I have those small conversations with him. But it only happens when we're able to have that conversation and pray and say, God, you know, there's some stuff happening here. Man, it blew up. Why? Not because of that day that we were arguing about who knows what. But it blew up because it had been simmering and it had been building up. And that's what happens in our life, man. We, we've lost great relationships in our life because we've let things just simmer and sit. And we've never, we've never exposed them or addressed them. And we've never confronted them. And some of us, man, we're about to lose some of the best friends in our lives because we don't confront situations. Because we don't address them. Because we're too scared of what they're going to say or how much more they're going to offend us or, or what else we're going to do to offend them. And so we let things linger. Um, Matthew chapter 6, 14 says this. It says, for if, you, for if you forgive people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. And we, we, we expect God's forgiveness because God is good. We expect him to love us. We expect him to show us grace and favor over our lives. We expect him to receive us into heaven, yet we're not willing to do the same for those that have hurt us. And we're not, I'm not even just talking about um, our enemies or people that we, that we don't like. But I'm talking about even family members. We have, I'm, I don't know about you, man, but in my family, if your family is anything like mine, I hope that it's not. But in my family, in my family, man, I got cousins that are talking about the other cousins. And, and you got this people, they always ask, oh, well, who's going to be there? You know, if there's a party, they're like, who's going to be there? You know, and you tell them. Sometimes you don't tell them so that they can show up anyway, <laughs> you know. So you got to be sneaky. You're like, no, 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 man, just you, just your side, you know. And so, and so you know, they, you know, and then we're like, dude, we're family, man. We should be able to talk with one another. We should love one another. We should be backing each other up the most, you know. And so we've lost this relationship. Um, and, and it's crazy because the story of Joseph is a great story to point to about forgiveness. Uh, when, when you look at his life, uh, Joseph was in prison. He was, he was first a slave, and then he was imprisoned. Uh, he, went through, he went through a lot of years of slavery and imprisonment. Uh, you know, all these things that happened, all these bad things that happened to him. And you can look at somebody like him in his life and say, man, this guy, this guy should have lost hope. This guy should have said whatever. Anyway, um, he ends up coming to a place where he's second to the king of Egypt. And so now he has all the power, right? And so he has all the power. And then he sees uh, his brothers that betrayed him. They're the reasons that he was enslaved. His brothers are the ones that sold him into slavery to begin with. So now Joseph has the power. I don't know about you, but, it, you know, uh, if you had the power and the people that betrayed you, you were able to confront and you had the power to do whatever to them. I don't know what, you're, I don't know what you would do. I'm not even going to let you speak because I know that you'll, be, you'll start lying to me and say, no, nah, I'd forgive him. Um, <laughs> But Joseph, the Bible says that Joseph had a chance. He had a chance to take vengeance. He had a chance to, to get them back. Oh, man, they, they deserve what they get. Man, they put me through years of torture. He could have done that. But the Bible says that Joseph forgave his, his brothers. Not because they deserved the forgiveness, but because he understood that God was in control of it all. And he, knew, he understood that the journey was not one his brothers put him on, but one that God was placing him on for the saving, for the saving of the world, right? And so, and so he understood that. And I think that that's something even with our family. Man, you know what? Even if you didn't start the fight, why don't you be the bigger person and go ask forgiveness? Why don't you be the bigger person? You, you know, something that we need to focus on is do we want to win the argument or win our friends? Do we want to win the argument or win our family? Some of us are more focused on winning the argument. Man, you probably don't even remember what you were arguing about. You don't even know what, you, what started the argument, you know? Or maybe you do. 
But regardless of why you're arguing or why you're fighting or why everything's happening, you need to think about, man, you know what? I'd rather win my family. They're way too, they're way too important to me. You know? And so that's something that God wants from us. And the other thing is this. The action plan is this. What we need to do, the, the steps that we need to take when someone's offended us is this. We need to take the action plan, which is this. It's, it's in your outline. We need to, number one, pray for those that hurt us. Pray for, the, pray for those that have hurt you. We need to pray. We need to, we need, that's the very first thing that we should do is pray. But except when we're hurt, what is the first thing we do? We run to everyone else. Tell everyone else what everyone's done to us. We talk about, we tell everyone how people have hurt us. We tell everyone and their mama. And then, and then we're reminded about, oh, maybe I should pray about it, you know. And, and we want everybody's opinion and everyone's advice before God's. And the first thing that we need to do is bring it to God. I guarantee you, you bring it to God first, you pray, and you list this to God. I guarantee you, you'll, you'll gain more wisdom than talking to 10 of your friends. And so bring it to God. Um, uh, praying, for, praying for others heals you. It heals you. Think about it. How am I going to pray for someone that hurt me? You know what I mean? Someone that's offended me. How am I going to pray for God to bless them? Can you imagine? God bless those that have hurt me. God bless those that, you know, that, that's, that sounds, that's, it almost contradicts itself, you know. I don't want to see someone blessed. I want to see someone hurt, you know. But when we pray for, for other people, what are we doing? We're, it's healing us. We're releasing it. We're letting it loose. We're, 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 at, we're telling God. And so healing can take place if we have the courage to forgive. And so, um, you know, God, the, the, Jesus often tells us to pray for our enemies, right? He tells us pray for those that have hurt you. Pray for your enemies. Now, Jesus could easily, could have easily said, hey, let the time, let time heal your wound, right? That could have been good advice for us that Jesus said, let, let time heal your wound. Jesus never said that. He never said that. He, he didn't say, let time heal your wound, or he never said, take it easy until you're ready to move on. That's stuff our friends tell us. Our friends tell us that, hey, man, hey, time, time will heal our wounds. Don't worry about it, man. In time, you'll forget about this person. In time, you'll forget about th- this hurt. In time, you'll forget about it, right? That's stuff our friend tells us. Or, hey, 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 be still. Chill out. You know, don't do nothing until you're ready to move on, right? That's what people tell us. But what does God tell us? He tells us to pray for our enemies. You know, he, 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 he puts almost like an active role in our lives to, to take place. He says, hey, pray for them. Pray for the people that have hurt you. You know, bless them. Be an example, Right? I'm not going to lie to you, man. I often forget about being the example. And I want to often do what my flesh wants to do. I often want to respond the way my flesh wants to respond and forget about it. The testimony. Okay? I, I've done that plenty of times. Where I've forgotten who I am. And I, you know, oh, you want to tell me? I'm going to tell you. Oh, you want to, oh, what? What? I know y'all don't do that. I know y'all don't do that at work or at school or wherever you're at. I know, I know y'all don't respond like that, right? But we often want to respond when all we have to do is pray. Second thing we need to do is we need to forgive others in the same way that we've been forgiven. And, and, and that actually takes vocalizing it. Actually open up your mouth and say, hey, I forgive you. And again, that's one of the toughest things to do is say, hey, I forgive you. And so are you, are you holding a grudge against somebody? Are you mad at somebody? Did somebody not shake your hand the right way? Or did someone just pass you up on the street and then say hi to you? You know, what, what are, you know what's going on in your life? You need, to re- you need to release it. You will never be more like God than when you forgive. Think about the, think about the people that hurt Jesus. Think about his best friends betraying him fleeing his time of need when he was about to go get crucified they came and everyone scattered everyone got lost he's looking around his best friends are gone right people that he had just been witnessing to and preaching to are over here saying crucify him right and they finally he's on the cross and he's getting crucified and what does he do he says father forgive them right he pleads for forgiveness you are never more like Christ then when you practice forgiveness, when, you, when those that have hurt you, you can forgive and you can, you can sincerely forgive. Forgive in the sense that you forgive and you forget, right? If we, can, if we could forgive like Christ, we would never bring up the past. 
If we could forgive like Christ, we would never remember the offenses that they've done to us, right? We would move on and we would just start over from this point on. And so we need to forgive. Let hurt, let the hurt go and set yourself free. And the third thing is that we need to trust God with your life. You need to trust God. Just like Joseph. Joseph, he didn't put his hands, he didn't put his life in the hands of his brother. He put his life in the hands of his God. Regardless of his situation, regardless of what happened in his life, he said, man, God, they're not in control. You are. I'm not going to let the people that offended me and put me here take control of my life. Wherever he was, whatever hurt he was going through, he still was a testimony to who God was in his life. Everything he did reflected Christ. Everything he did reflected God in such a big way. Romans 12, 19 says this. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, said the Lord. Why don't you stand to your feet? Right there where you're at, why don't you close your eyes? Why don't you close your eyes? And I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, God, this morning, I pray that you heal my soul. Let me release this hurt. That you would kill every root of bitterness of my life. Lord, help me pray for those that have offended me. Help me forgive. Release the hurt. And help me to be able to trust you with my life in Jesus' name. Keep your, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. I want to take a moment right now just to allow God just to do the work in your life right now. I don't, I don't know what's happening in your life. I don't know the hurt. I don't know the situations. I don't know who's offended you, who's hurt you. Who's, you know, I don't even know if you've realized that there's a, a root of bitterness in you. But I want to allow the Spirit of God just to allow it to move in your life, to work in his life, in your life as he pleases. So what I want to do this morning, I want to invite all of you, if you haven't, if you even if you come with a, with a prayer need, I want to invite you to come to this altar and just tell him, Jesus, I am yours. I am yours, God. If you need to pray for healing for the bitterness, then Go ahead, man. Bring it to him. Bring it to his feet and say, God, I am yours. God, I'm yours. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to change me into your image. If you have other, other things you're praying for, then, man, bring it to God this morning and say, God, I need you in my life. I need you, God. God, I need healing for my grandmother, Lord. I, I need, God, healing for my, for my family, for my, for my brother, for my sister, God. Father, I, I have a financial crisis. I need you, God. Father, I pray that you would show up. So I want to invite you just to get out of your seat. Make your way this way. And if there's some ushers or people out there, you guys can help me pray. But we want to pray with you. We just want to pray with you. We're going to pray for God's best over your life. Amen. Father, we love you, Jesus. We're yours, Jesus.